Hello, it's good to be with you today for the Fortune 5 Prosperity Devotional. And today, I want to teach you a new dance step that will help you prosper. It's called the Prosperity Two-Step. I want to invite you to share this broadcast with others. And also, I would love it if you would uh, put in the city and state where you're watching from. Let us know you're watching. We're glad that this can help people and be a blessing. And so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into today's broadcast. We're going to be reading our theme scripture about the prosperity two-step is Proverbs 28, 13. The Bible says, he who covers his sins will not prosper. But who, whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. So notice he says, if we cover our sins, we'll not prosper. But if we confess and forsake our sins, we will have mercy. This is the prosperity two-step. And um, to cover means to conceal or to hide. All of us know this, but we don't always live like this. And that is, we know that God sees everything and God knows everything. There's nothing hidden uh, from him. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. So when we try and hide sins or hide things we know that are disobedience that we shouldn't be doing, we're just fooling ourselves. We're not really hiding anything from anybody. But God says if we've been doing that, there's a way out. There's a recipe for uh, prosperity. This is God's recipe. The first step is number one, to confess. The word confess it just means that you're being honest with yourself and honest with God and you're owning your sin, you're owning your disobedience, you're saying, I missed it. And if we understand that sin simply means, it's a Greek archery term that means to miss the bullseye or miss the mark. All of us, you know, at the, have fired an arrow maybe in the past with a, with a bow and arrow and we've missed the mark. In our lives, we've missed the mark at times. And thank God he is rich in mercy. But we've got to appropriate and access that mercy. When we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. First Kings 835 says this, when the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, when they pray towards this place and confess your name and turn from their sin because you afflict them, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel, that they may teach them the good way in which they should walk and send rain on your land, which you have given to your people as an inheritance. So God says when we sin, the heavens can become shut up and it can stop the blessing of God. But the Bible says when we confess and forsake, the forsake part is the good old fashioned word repentance. Forsake means to leave, to stay. Stop the desert to desert and to reject. We say, nope, I don't want sin. I want God. Now think about this in the Old Testament. Whenever they sinned under the law, they would have to bring some kind of livestock and sacrifice that as a sacrifice for sins. And what we don't think many times is that was actually their wealth. Every time they sinned, it cost them financially. What if you got the mindset and realized every time you sin, it probably costs you financially. You might be a lot more um, motivated to obey God and walk with God. I'm not preaching law, but I'm showing you what the word of God says. Maybe this has hindered your prosperity. There's something you've been holding in your heart and God will set you free and you can forsake it, run away from it and run to God. You know, looking at the New Testament, what does, what happens to us when we sin is it destroys our confidence towards God. First John 3.20, for if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now you might think, keep his commandments, doing those things that are pleasing in his sight. Is that law? No, that's relationship out of love. We love God, so we want to uh, please God. We want to do those things that are pleasing in his sight, and we want to obey his word. And we know that the New Testament talks about believing in him and loving one another. Loving God and loving each other are the two big commands. When we fail to walk in obedience, what happens is condemnation creeps into our heart. And when condemnation creeps into our heart, we lose our confident expectation uh, to receive 
all of God's goodness. And we lose that confident expectation. It isn't that God isn't making it available. It makes it difficult for us to receive from God because of con um, condemnation. And God doesn't want you to live in condemnation. The other thing that happens is Romans 8, 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Now, we're all sons and God daughters of God um, positionally, but if we are living a lifestyle of known disobedience to God, our heart will be full of condemnation, and that will stop our confidence in faith and being able to hear His voice. And Holy Spirit is both the one that can lead you and guide you in your sowing, and He also is the one that shows you where your harvest is. So part of prosperity is an intimate uh, relationship with God where we live a holy life. We follow the leading and direction of Holy Spirit. And as we do this, we are blessed, 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 blessed in Jesus' name. I pray you have a wonderful day. Please share this with someone else. And uh, we love you so much. Have a great week.